Hi, boys and girls. Tonight is Christmas Eve, and I promised a story to you. I have my jammies on, I have my blankie, um, and I have the Polar Express. So um, you can find this book anywhere, Amazon, Library, Target, Walmart. Um, it's a good book, good movie, written and illustrated by Chris Van Allisburg. Okay. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound. I was, <clears throat> excuse me, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear. The ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There's no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my home. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express <laughs> raced northward. And my puppy wants to read the story too, I guess, or listen to it. Okay, Dixie. My daughter had painted my nails the other day and they're starting to come off. My dog likes licking those too, so. Soon there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we could scrape the moon. But the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountain turned into the hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, there is the North Pole. The North Pole, it was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first we saw no elves. They are gathering at the center of the city. The conductor told us, that is where Santa will give us the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all asked. The conductor answered, he will choose one of you. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves. Outside, we saw hundreds of elves. As our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no farther, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from the harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing I'd ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointing to me, said, let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. 
I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, now what would you like for Christmas? I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine, but the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. <clears throat> then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from a reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. A clock struck as, <clears throat> excuse me, a clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me and I put it to my bathrobe, in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once above us, then disappeared in the cold, dark polar sky. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached in my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. Uh-oh. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said but the train gave a sudden lurch and we started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell and made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, oh, that's too bad. Yes, my father, said my father, it's broken. When I had shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. I wonder why they didn't hear it. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all who truly believe. The end. Again, that was the Polar Express. It's a little different in the book than it is the movie. So see if you can notice some of the differences and maybe talk about it with your family or friends, whoever you have with you tonight. I wish all of you a very blessed Merry Christmas. Good night, sleep tight.